So that the way of ending the, the meditation with the reflection about what you can bring to benefit the world is a variation of an ancient Buddhist tradition of dedicating the merit of whatever practice activity we've done, whatever good things we've done in the world. And, um, you know, we could always just keep saying the same thing. May the merit or the, of our good deeds be the benefit of others. And let it just be kind of wishful thinking and some invisible way that that happens. Or we could actually specifically consider and how it could spread from us in ways that are direct and, and uh, clearly seen. And so um, either way is great. And I offered you the second way today. <clears throat> so, so this is the fourth uh, talk in the series on the faculty of concentration of samadhi. And there's a, as I said at the first day, there's samadhi has two very general meaning meanings. As a faculty, which is what you know the immediate topic of consideration, it's a particular functionality of the mind. It's probably maybe a particular place in the brain that is able to be settled, focused, gathered together. At least that's what the ancient Buddhists thought. Or maybe it's not a particular place. Maybe it's just a, a combined functioning of different mental faculties that work in harmony to get us settled into the second meaning of samadhi, which is a state, a generalized state of being. Sometimes people call it a state of mind. And uh, samadhi is um, uh, a state in which we're um, fully present, fully engaged in what's happening. Uh, there's a long tradition of calling that being absorbed. That's a, that involves an absorption. Um, maybe it's, we should be a little bit careful using that word because of the idea that it's, when we are absorbed, there's also maybe sometimes a sense of losing ourselves in the experience. Maybe an excessive merging in the experience where there isn't a clarity of attention and awareness of what's happening. And um, I think that as concentration deepens in meditation, um, the way that I understand it for myself and from the ancient teachings of the Buddha, there is a greater and greater clarity of attention. The mindfulness becomes brighter. Um, in fact, the deepest uh, states of what's usually called absorptions, jhana, have a very clear uh, 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 form of awareness or mindfulness as part of them. And um, and this state of being fully present for, fully aware of something, with the mind not distracted, and not dis, uh, not fragmented by things. And this undistracted presence has a lot to do with what samadhi is. That's continuous through time. The um, now what gets interesting is that um, as we kind of really get present for something and get organized and unified for something. There's a number of things which are not happening and a number of things which begin to happen. What's not happening is that the busy, active thinking mind is not perpetuating itself. It's a, often it's, it's, it's a self-perpetuating machine, the, the mind, the thinking mind. And, and uh, the faster we think, uh, especially if we have negative thoughts, the more stressful it is for the mind, both directly because of the, the strength of the thinking but also because of what's being said. It can be sometimes be like little daggers we stick each other with, ourselves with, with our thoughts. And, um, and as you know, I've maybe said, one of the leading sources of all kinds of psychological problems is the rumination, is the uh, regular, continuous things we're saying to ourselves. And, um, and that's a particular function of the mind, to, say, to, to think a lot, to have imagery a lot, and just kind of be spinning these stories and ideas, keeps going, going. And part of what happens in samadhi is the mind gets settled and quiet and unified. There is a quieting of the thinking mind. And then we're spared from some of the stories and beliefs and criticisms and, 
and uh, undermining thoughts, or, you know, or, uh, that we have. And there's more space in the mind for other things. And um, and so once the kind of the irritating or the or the stressful kinds of thoughts have quiet, then this unified feeling of being present starts feeling more and more uh, good, to, to use a non-technical word. And uh, and um, so one of the things that falls away or gets quiets down um, are thoughts, feelings of discontent, thoughts of irritation, thoughts of boredom. Um, all these other these things are think of them as activities of the mind. Nothing is inherently boring, except for the activities of the mind that evaluates it that way. Nothing is uh, irritating except for the activities, the thoughts, the ideas that the mind has that kind of interprets it that way, understands it that way. Um, and uh, there's all these things that make us kind of feel, you know, kind of dissatisfaction, uncomfortable, irritated, um, bored, um, wanting, greedy, wanting something else, expectations, all these things that have a kind of a stressful effect on our mind and body. That um, as the mind, as we allow the mind to settle and get quieter, those begin to uh, quiet as well. And the more concentrated we can become, more fully engaged and settled and just allowing particular experience we're focusing on to fill awareness, to be the subject we're doing, and the mind gets quieter, clearer, all this afflictive kind of thoughts and ideas falls away. And if there's no boredom, if there's no irritation, if there's no dissatisfaction uh, going on, then we're just here in a deeper, deeper settled way, in a way that can feel like we're deeply contented, deeply satisfied, deeply at peace, deeply uh, happy. And part of that is um, uh, not because we're making ourselves happy or making ourselves contented. Uh, it's just the goodness and the peace and the relief of not having the, um, these afflictive kind of thoughts, ideas going on. In the teachings of the Buddha, these are particularly... Um, uh, he particularly signals out the five hindrances, that when they quiet down, uh, it just there's a, there's a sense of goodness. He calls it gladness and, or, and joy and happiness that can be there, just because it's so good to not be afflicted anymore, and it's kind of the relief of it or the fullness of it. I also believe that, um, that as these afflictive kind of overlay of our, what's going on finally begins to get quiet, not an easy thing to do, but finally get quiet. And as we get more concentrated, uh, more settled, more unified, that um, uh, uh, there's a goodness from within, a place of deeper sense of goodness, well-being, that has a chance to bubble up. And the image the Buddha actually uses for this deeper well-being is an underground, you know, underwater, in a lake, an underwater fountain of water that from the bottom of the lake flows up into the water and spreads out the refreshing, nice water into the new water into the lake. And this idea that there's this wellspring or this spring, a fountain deep inside of us of well-being that can well up and fill us. That's not something we're doing, making, forcing. Um, um, it's more like we're getting out of the way when the hindrances and these afflictive thoughts have finally quieted down and we kind of learn how to open and be fully present and make space for something to come in, space to be influenced by the depths of our what's good inside of us, then you can sometimes feel this wellspring of, of joy or well-being or happiness. That's one way of experiencing it. Everyone has a little different way. And, um, and so... A part of what constant, uh, this samadhi practice and some is, is, is a practice of letting go, but I think more profoundly, it's a practice of getting out of the way. Really kind of allowing ourselves to trust something really deep inside and get quiet enough that we begin allowing this to flow. Now, certainly initially as we begin this movement of trusting something deep inside, some of what happens is the purification process. Some of what's been buried deep inside 
grief and anger and sorrow and different things, um, you know, it need, they need to kind of come out and have their time in, in the sun of awareness and, and kind of empty out. Uh, so, you know, we have to learn that process and be patient with it and hopefully know not to add afflictive thoughts on top of it, but just feel inspired that it's so good to have this stuff finally come out and so it can kind of dissipate, resolve itself, heal itself. But this deeper movement then, it's a feeling at some point, the goodness that wells up, the well-being, the gladness that wells up, that's there, that flows, that tingles, that is warm, that is soft, that is quiet, that uh, it feels connected, feels like we're home, feel cozy. Um, the image that I kind of like, love for um, uh, getting really settled and feeling the this part of the joy that can happen in meditation I spend a lot of time focusing on the breath. So the breath is kind of like this rhythm. And sometimes I feel like it's like uh, petting the cat. And, um, and so, you know, I don't just kind of tap the cat. I don't just take a fist and kind of press down hard of the cat. I gently kind of uh, stroke the cat. And if I st- uh, the cat starts purring. If I stop stroking the cat, the cat stops purring. I have to start stroking it again, the cat purrs. And um, so the same way we stay with the breath and the breathing is like the stroke of stroking the cat or the awareness is like the stroking of the, of the, of the cat. We're staying with the breathing. And at some point, it's not automatic and it's not something you can force, but as we get more and more settled, there can be a sense of, of the, the, the whole system of who we are in, an, again, a non-technical idea that everyone has experiences this differently. But the system, our body and mind, begins to purr, begins to kind of feel good and nice and light. And, and this recognition of goodness, recognition of pleasure, recognition, recognition of what feels beautiful or feels pur- purrful, purringful, um, is, um, is part of what supports samadhi practice. And uh, without expectation, without demand, without striving, but being open to start feeling the goodness, the well-being that comes when we settled and allowing that well-being to influence us, meaning allowing ourselves to get out of the way and let it kind of move through us. The Buddha talked about letting it suffuse us, the whole body. So this is part of uh, samadhi, is this uh, sense of joy and happiness that can come from practice. So thank you. And uh, I hope that um, you have a wonderful day or wonderful next 24 hours. And I hope that uh, you, your inner life provides you with nourishment and well-being. Thank you.